Hey, it's Andre and well, welcome back to the environment. Just getting set up to start shooting the OMP Challenger video. Uh, this is going to be a really fun unboxing, I think, because it's a nice looking balsa plug and play plane. Say that three times fast, hey? Um, all right, without further ado, let's jump into this unboxing and have a little fun. All right, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. This, as I mentioned in the intro, is the OMP Balsa Plug and Play Challenger. So it's your traditional looking uh, mid-size high wing. It's a 48 inch wing aircraft actually, um, but it's got that traditional stick looking, uh, and what's really cool about this plane, I didn't realize until I actually started researching it, is they do offer it now mine's an electric which is awesome because i can fly it out here in the main field really quickly um you can go with a wet solution on this one so you actually can drop in a nitro motor and everything and the provisions are in that model this one as i said is the ep electric powered and they do have they have a gp uh version and uh you can get them in a plug and play and which is this one is an arf almost ready to fly so spec wise and everything i'm reading this upside down 48 inches uh the electric works off a 12 uh by 6.5 inch um prop <laughs> get off the set get now go away oh you can deal with this is going to be in the outtake look cat all right spec time uh wingspan of 49 inches that's uh 1250 millimeters length 39.6 so a thousand to six millimeters and flying weight in the electric spec which is what we're going to be having is about 11 uh 1170 grams um let's see electric they spec out a 12 by 6 by 5 inch prop uh, and the motor is a sunny sky 22 to a 2820 um, doesn't say the kv so we'll know more when we dig into it um, 40 amp esc four metal gram uh, mini servos and they recommend a minimum of a six channel receiver so i guess you can split up your ailerons and everything have a little bit of fun so all right let's open this sucker up you get a really awesome decal package uh, from OMP and Buddy RC. So this airplane will be stickered up really well. And uh, it's the red one. And I know how, uh, I, I always comment on how things are packaged and wrapped and everything. So it looks like these come in individually wrapped bags and all the control surfaces are Let's see if it's going to focus on that. They're all padded for shipping, so nothing gets punctured. Again, it's a balsa with a uh, coating on it, a monocoat. It's definitely uh, a, a nice way to do it versus the foam, especially for anybody who's really, who's really pushing that wants that balsa, uh, but doesn't have the time to build. And I think this is where their product comes in and is going to be exceptionally, um, you know, interesting to the market share. So, all right. So there are the two wing halves, and we have, everything's taped in here really well, but oh, look at that fuse, that is nice. That is really nice, uh, 12 by 6.5 electric. So that's pretty cool. This airplane is a 3S plane and they spec out a 22, a 3S 22. Uh, um, I'm almost surprised it's not a 4S airplane, but I bet a lot of people drop the prop down and, and go 4S. All right, and so we got some landing gear and we got a spar. We're gonna real quickly blast through this unboxing part and get this thing assembled. Oh, that looks, you know what? <laughs> I can't cover this good, so this is really nice. I'm I'm so terrible at doing all these film coats. Oh, oh, you! I don't think this the video does does the, the sheen and the look of this thing justice. And look, look at all the attention to detail for packaging and, and shipping. They put the tape with all the little covers and everything, so nothing gets dinged in shipping. It just waits till you know you throw it in your car but it's a nice size fuselage so this is not an overwhelming aircraft and i know a lot of you're going to be asking is this 
a trainer? Is this worthy of trainer? And I almost want to say second aircraft. Now it is a tail dragger, which is really cool. I love tail draggers over the over the tricycle gear. So I wouldn't say it's your first aircraft, but if you're looking, if you're new to the hobby and you're looking for a balsa, oh, I would not shy away from these models. Um, after this one is unveiled and everything and opened up, I do have to do the video for the Bighorn, which is another 48 inch, but it's a high wing, a little bit more sporty in nature, but I think it's also going to appeal to a lot of people. Huh. So magnets, check that out. That is, everything is taped, locked in there and everything. That's a lot of attention to detail. I'm liking this thing a lot. Uh, it's got little little catches. Nice. So there's a the ESC is buried inside, um, but look at that strap and everything. That's really cool. Really cool, nice motor. So it is a sunny sky, it's 1100 kV. So it's the X2820-5 1100 kV motor. So good component, good, good, healthy components. You will never run into issue with a sunny sky motor. So that's pretty darn cool. Again, their instructions are on their website for download. Uh, nothing comes in the box, so it's a PDF file, so download that right away. I love the color. I love how punchy the red is, and then you get the high contrast on the elevator, uh, the whites so for orientation, which is perfect for a new pilot. Huge aileron control surfaces, so you can run this with a simple four channel receiver if you want to. Um, and then your control surfaces are just, um, you know, left and right on your, your ailerons. Or if you want to get really fancy, uh, you can go and uh, set it up with uh, individual mixing and probably dial in a little uh, flapperons and so forth. Uh, nylon screw for the uh, wing connector. So very much like that big crazy 3d plane that i have yet to fly ball links on all the control surfaces so that's really cool look at that that is nice there's the spar nice landing gear so we have the tail uh, and the rudder control. You've got your various control links. So there is a little, couple little things you need to do to get the tail piece in. There's a little indent. So make sure you follow those instructions really closely, but there's a little spot where the, um, uh, where the rudder wheel goes and you just need to clean that out and then wrote it all through. So, piece of cake, really. But follow the instructions. As Alex said, download a PDF. That's what I've got on my phone right now, and that seems to be doing the trick. So, a little hole there, and then the idea is that the landing gear will be routed through. A little carbon plate. So, two out of three of the holes are pre-drilled. I'll uh, flip this up here in a second once I get them located. Not too crazy tight, but tight enough to hold on, obviously. This is the tail gear. And when positioned, that will be sitting inside the actual elevator, a rudder, sorry, section, and then when you turn, that's how it goes. So there it looks like there's a little bit of a mark. It's kind of hard to see from here. To do this, I put a little bit of tape there. I'm gonna line this up, put a little mark, and do a little drill very slowly. Whew. 
pretty scary, huh? No big deal. They're in unison. Very cool. Just need a little CA glue and that'll be in place. There we go. Easy peasy. Look at that. Whew, extremes. Landing gear is a 2.5 mil uh, hex. Don't have to over tighten that at all. All right, flip this bad boy over. Oh, look at that. Looks nice. Looks really nice. And then you take your little pin, spin that guy into place. The nice thing with balsas, you notice all kinds of little neat tricks that they do. Uh, the way they, um, there's little catches here, I'll show you in a sec. And you can actually, you know, if you put a connector in or a Y connector or whatever, you can route your wiring through. And that's the really cool thing with balsa planes i noticed that with the extra there's just all kinds of little nooks and crannies where you can put zip ties and hooks and everything so this plane if you've got a transport problem or a small car uh, will break down really easily you just got to get in there with your fingers and turn that screw in until the wing is snug you don't need to overdo it or anything like that because you don't want to overstress the balsa but you want to make sure that's nice and tight so it doesn't rattle loose. There you go, snug tight. So what I'm talking about here, as far as all the little catches, is right in there, right there. You can route your wires, everything through, and everything is nice and clean. So that's pretty cool. I might actually route my antennas through there for the receiver. Okay, so I'm just using an FR Sky receiver. Anything will work. Any nice six channel receiver will work. But all I've done is stuck that guy in there, uh, putting that right wing onto channel five. That's my right wing. Yeah, I got my rights and left right tonight on channel five, and then I got to go through. Now, the only event advantageous part at this point would have been to have actually labeled the elevator and rudder. Um, but like I said, I'll get my label maker out after the fact and figure out what they are. What about the wing pin? There it is. Don't lose these. Um, if you do take apart the airplane, I find like those, uh, those nice little cases you get with some of the motors or higher end servos. Um, I use those to uh, store all kinds of bits and you just drop them right down into the cowl in the battery bay and then never lose them. Look at this thing. It looks so amazing. Like, it's such a really nice color pattern. and. You know, like I said, maybe not an early a beginner flight plane, but definitely your second airplane based on the fact that it is so visual. And I think you could have a lot of fun flying this thing, getting down and dirty and just really having a lot of good time with it. And it's a tail dragger. I love tail draggers. We are on the home stretch of this assembly. Uh, just working through a couple things. Got the receiver dumped in there nice and clean. Put some Velcro into the front end of it. And the OMP Challenger is almost done. I will have to go in and do the radio programming, follow the manual. And I did actually jump into the manual finally and find the CG point is uh, 62 millimeters from the leading edge. There you go, 62. So the reason I like those stickers, the little dots, is because you can just get your fingers underneath. And, oh, look at that, a little bit of tail heavy. That battery is almost on the firewall. So that's good to know. I would bet you could probably get a nice 3000 in there very nicely, but a 2200 is going to keep this plane very sporty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So that is almost to the front of the firewall. Uh, and if you want a little bit more nose down attitude while flying, you can definitely put the battery all the way forward and do a little elevator trim, but not too bad.
I say we spin this thing up and see what it looks like. All right, controls. Right, left, got a lot of throws. I gotta dial all that down. Oh, my uh, rudder is backwards. Very, very, very nice. You cannot be unimpressed by this. Nice balsa plug and play. Look, this is not a hard assembly. Uh, a couple bits of work. Really, the most complex thing of the whole thing was setting up the, uh, the rudder. Uh, you just need your drill, take your time, punch everything through, follow the instructions. CG is a snap. Again, I am using a uh, Chinaline Hobby 3S2200 70C, and that pretty well puts it towards the front of the firewall to uh, get your CG. So there is still, I would say, a good quarter of inch, half an inch in there. You might not be able to see that, but there's lots of range for batteries, and if you need a little bit more forward CG, obviously you can either add a bigger battery, which is always the way to go, um, and or uh, a little bit of weight, but I got a feeling this plane on a 3S2200 is gonna be very sporty. Love all this stuff. Um, the fact that it will come apart really easy and if you decide that you need to be able to take this thing apart to transport I would totally put in a couple small extensions into the bay for the uh, servos into the receiver so you could pop those wings off and everything but at 49 inches it's not going to be a hard aircraft to transport in your car I don't think so love the hatches love the landing gear um, Totally, totally going to put skis on this thing to fly it in the winter. And it's just the strikingness of it all. So the last thing I got to do is do a little bit more programming on the radio. Slap on some of these amazing decals from uh, Buddy RC and uh, an OMP. And again, I'm Andre. This is the OMP Challenger plug-and-play balsa plane that you've been asking for. Thanks for watching.